Okay. I think we're ready to get started here. Rob, can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? All right. And you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. All right, so today's uh, session, we're gonna cover forms and the ability to make a form interactive by making use of the form helper template program. So, um, and by the way, today, uh, Johnny, you, your usual host is, is out today. So uh, Rob and I are gonna be doing this one. Um, so first, I'm just showing some mock-ups of uh, what we want to accomplish here. So I just have a, a really basic form here. And what I want to accomplish though, is I want everything but the name field to be disabled. So we accomplish things like this using the, the, the form helper template program. And that template program, which I'm, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna get really familiar with. When a form is first created, it calls the template program passing a mode of form render. And that gives us the opportunity to set everything up how we want it. Um, here's just some sample code here, and, and you'll see that it's pretty easy to use. We have, we have various procedures that are relevant to you know, interacting with a form. For example, disable field, hide field, set a value. Um, so in addition from the RPG, just to clarify. Exactly. Yep. This is all this is all RPG based. I'm gonna go to the next screenshot here. And the other thing I want to accomplish too is if the user happens to type in a name of a company, so we're we're pretending, let's say, that this is a, a form to add a new customer. Um, if they type the name of a company that already exists, we want to show that immediately and continue to, you know, have these other fields disabled. So, you know, alternate, alternatively, you know, you might have a button that says, you know, save, and then we would do that check. You know, you could do that as well. But here we're just trying to show as, you know, some instant feedback to the user. So if they put in a customer, that does not exist, then we're gonna enable all the fields and we're gonna set the focus to the address field, okay? So, let me go into Builder. So I already set some of this up because I didn't wanna you know, go through the process of creating every, well, at least this form I already created. Um, okay. So, basic form. Um, I did create a field group, but let's just look at this form. So, just like the mock up. So, if I go to fields, the top right here, there's a button for helper program. I'm going to click that. Here is where I would enter the name of my RPG form helper program. And I have various, I have three options of how, what, what mode I want this to act in. Do I want the helper program to be called just when the form's created? And that's, that's the form render mode I, I spoke about earlier. Um, the other, the default option, because I think this is probably the most common option is, sure, at form creation, and then every time a field is changed. So if a user, if the field value is one, two, three, and it remains one, two, three, don't bother calling it. And by change, John, you mean tabbing out of the field after you've made a change, right? Yes, or if it's a combo or a date field, it would pick up that change right away. And then form creation, the last one is form creation, anytime a field is changed or if it just loses focus. And that means, as Rob just mentioned, if you tab out of the field or if you, you know, click your mouse to leave the field, it's losing focus, then you could call it there as well. Um, I'm gonna leave the default option. And then down here is the, the template. 
Uh, I'm just going to quickly scroll through this because I'll show this in the uh, in, in RDI. It'll probably be easier to read. But the important thing is is you copy your program from this program, EX NAB. So that's exa example Nitro App Builder Form Helper. That's what it stands for. So let me go into RDI here, and I'm just I just have this is the default template. So I have this up. So there are all sorts of um, helper procedures in here. Um, one thing I want to note too is, is this has two, there are two global variables available in this program. Mode, G mode, G for global mode, form render. Um, there are other modes that get called to change or blur, but typically all I really care about is, is it form render if it's not form render? then what's the name of the field that just changed? So that'll pass down the name of the field that, that was just changed or just lost focus. And here are the, the various procedures available. Um, we're really gonna focus on, initially, disable field, enable field. Um, yeah, really, for now, that's what we're gonna look at. And then, just like any of the other template programs, we're meant to always leave the main line in place. Just leave that alone. And then we create a procedure named process where you're meant to put your code. So our little sample here just says, if mode is render, we're doing nothing else. We just have a select statement and we're checking the name of the field. So I'm gonna go back to App Builder and I'm gonna put in So this is the helper program that I created for this. And I'm going to save this. And let me show you. So I could just go here and I could kind of interact with it. So notice everything's disabled, or everything except the name. As I type something in here and I leave, everything gets enabled now. Okay. If I were to go here and blank this out, everything gets disabled again, except aside from the name. So let me show you, if I were to change it just to at form creation, so I'm gonna save that now. Now, when I do this, nothing changes because it's only making that call at form creation, which, you know, there are use cases for that where you just wanna set up some things and you know, maybe based on the user's uh, authority, you might turn off certain fields or something. So let me put this back to, and let's, let's look at the code behind this. So all we care about is process. So form render, I'm disabling the four fields address, city, state, and zip. Else, if it's not in form render mode, and I'm gonna show you, we'll look at the network traffic. If the field is C name, if it's blank, so every form field, you can use the regular VV in char, num, uh, date, you know, to, to retrieve the values of the form. If it's blank, I'm gonna disable the fields and I'm gonna focus the field back to name. If it's not blank, I'm gonna enable all those fields and then focus it to the address, okay? So let me go back here to App Builder. And just to see that, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring up uh, the developer tools. So I'm just gonna do something here to force the, the form to uh, recreate itself. So let's see what gets called. Okay, VV call. Let's look at this. So there is my form helper program, action form render. And this is what I sent back, disable those four fields. Okay, so back to RDI. That's what, this is what, this is what happened. The mode was form render and we disabled four fields. So now let me make a change. 
ABC. So now what gets called? So the same helper program gets called again. Now it's an action of change, which I'm, I don't even care about the action. I just, I'm, I'm, I just have an else statement. The field is C name. Notice C name is passed down is ABC. And we're sending back to enable those four fields and then to focus the cursor to the address field. Okay. So if I go back to my wireframes, really all I'm accomplishing so far is this. Um, I, I want to I accomplish this. I, I want when that name is not blank, I want to check if it exists. If it exists, I'm going to use a new form helper procedure to, to send an error back. Okay. So let me go back to App Builder. And I created another version of this with B. Let me save that. And I'm going to go into RDI and let's just see what that looks like. So I cleaned it up a bit. If you remember, so here's the form render. In the initial form render, I was disabling every field individually, four fields. In this case, I'm just saying disable all fields but enable C name, just less code. And then my else statement, I broke this out into its own procedure. So typically, that's what I would do. I would have, you know, when field is, you know, name, when it's address, process address, when it's city, process city, just so to keep this, try and keep this clean. So let's look at what process C name is doing. So I'm pulling in the name. If the name is blank, I'm disabling everything. But I'm enabling the C name field, and then I want to set the focus to the C name field. Else, if it's not blank, I'm just going out to that demo CMAS file, and I'm just checking to see if I have an entry that matches the name. If I do, I'm going to set an error on C name. So this is a new, this is a procedure we haven't seen. So it's just set here, the name of the field and the air that you want. And then I'm gonna focus it back to the name. Else, enable everything, we're good to go and focus to the address. Okay, so let's, let's see this in action now. So I changed it to B, I'm gonna close developer tools here. Okay, so I'm gonna type in CNX, Corporation, that sh we should have an entry in there. Okay, name already exists. I'll just put a two. Now we're good to go. So just to, let's just look at this one more time. So we get our initial call to form render. Let me just, headers. Here's our initial call to form render. It looks a little different than it did last time. The last time we had four fields just at disable, but now we're saying disable all and enable C name. Now, CNX Corporation. So that makes a call. If I look at the headers, field C name. Here's my C name value. And this time we're passing back air field and the message. Now notice air is an array, so I can send back multiple airs. I could send back, you know, I could um, have multiple fields in air at the same time if, if, you know, if that was what was required. And then we're focusing the name, putting the cursor focus back to C name. And then if I give a name that's unique, now we're getting back enable all and focus to the address. Okay. All right. So next, let me go to our, let me go back here. 
All right, so that was the first form. I think we accomplished everything here. The next form, uh, we're going to demonstrate how to use dynamic combo boxes. So I have a form here, state, city, and zip. Um, when I initially, I want city and zip to be disabled. So we're going to use the form render there, and we're just going to disable those two fields. But I want to listen for when the user changes the state combo box. So when they do that, suppose they chose California, I want to limit this combo box to only show cities within California. And I also want to focus the field there as well. So in order to do this, we're going to use a new procedure. Well, not new, but one we haven't seen yet in, in, the, in the form helper called filter combo. And this we pass the name of the field. So the name of the field that I want to filter, and that's the city field. And then we have property and value. So this is, this is a combo box. And we'll see if, if you haven't seen before, but we're, we're going to do it. But when you set up a combo box for a field, you're actually mapping it to a data source. So I created a data source of that is, you know, shows states and cities. So what I want to do here is I want to tell this combo, this data source, I want to filter it. So I want to give it a property and a value. So the property is the, the name of the field on the data source that I want to use as the filter and then the value. So in other words, here I would say, okay, California, all right, the data source here, there's a, there's a field called state. I want to limit state to California. That's my value. Hopefully it'll make more sense when we, when we see it. Then once they select a city, now I want to enable the zip code and I want to limit it to only zip codes that are within Sacramento. So let's, let's see this in action here. So form two. Let me initially take this off first. Okay, so this is just a, you know, we have three fields here and each one is a dropdown. So if I click this, you know, we used a, uh, a data source called US States that has a state and a state name. We're displaying to the user the state name. And then when, when we submit the value, we're submitting the two character code. That's our value field. So California would be CA. City. I have a data source called cities. I'm displaying city and the value field is city. But notice state is available. C state is available on this data source. Okay. And then if we look at zip, We're displaying the zip, our value fields a zip, but city is available. You know, I probably should have made this city and state in case there's, you know, states that have the same city name, but I didn't. So let's just look, I created this as a field group, meaning they, they go left to right. So state, city, zip. And if we look at it, that's what we got. So here are my states. Cities. So notice cities, you know, we have Chicago, we have San Francisco, it's, it's, it's a mix of all states and then, you know, zip codes as well. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add the form helper here. Save this. So now we should see right away that these are disabled. The only thing that's available is state. So let's take a look at that code. So form render, disable field C city, disable field C zip. So that's, 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 what, that's what we're getting here initially. 
So when I select a state, it's going to get called again and it's going to pass G field of C state and I'm going to run process C state. So let's look at that. So I'm going to pull in the value of state. If it's blank, they cleared it out. I'm going to go back to my initial state of the form. I'm going to disable city and state. Otherwise, I'm only going to enable city and I'm going to filter that city combo. So what field do I want to filter? C city. Within C city, within that field, I know there's a data source and it has a field of C state and I want to limit all its results down to the value of whatever state is. So, and then we're going to focus it. Let me just show that just so we could see it. So if I choose California, now I'm only seeing California. If I clear it out, now it disable it again. If I choose Illinois, I'm only seeing Illinois. Let's take a look at the uh, network traffic just to get an idea here. So I'm going to clear it. So it made a call to, that's our helper program, field C state. And notice C state is blank. So that code ran and it said to disable those two fields. So now I passed Iowa. So we said to enable the city field and then to filter the city field, check for a property of C state and limit the results down to IA for Iowa and only show me those cities. And then when we choose Des Moines, it runs again, but now it's passing a field of C city. So that other code runs, we'll go back here. So it's the select statement and then G field of C city. So now we're processing C city. If it's blank, disable the zip, else enable the zip. And then same thing, we're doing that filter combo we're filtering the zip field. The zip field is a combo box. It has a data source and one of its fields is city. And I want to limit that data source to records where the city equals C city. And then I want to focus to the zip code. So if we look at what happened, there's our navel and our filter data. So now I should only have we only have one zip code in here. This isn't a full list of cities and, and zip codes. I'm just going off of the demo CMAS file. Hey, Sean, while you're on that topic, could you show them where you got that list of states from? This is something that's actually distributed with valence. Yeah. Um, so if I go out of here, let me just save this. get rid of this. So I'm just going to click, I show examples up here. So really examples are technically it's any IDs under a thousand. We reserve everything, you know, when, when you create your own stuff, it starts at 1001. Um, but so there's all sorts of stuff in here. If I, I'm just going to limit to data source and I'll scroll by here sort by ID here. Uh, let's see. There it is, US, US states. So this is just a data source that I made use of. So that's out there if anyone wants to create a combo box of valid US states, there's already a file that holds all 50 of them. There's also a, a countries uh, called the, the file behind the states is demo states and there's also a demo countries, CNTRYS, that holds. There we go. For convenience. 
Okay, nice. And then the combos that I used were cities, combos. I just took, you know, I cheated here. I just went off the file that already exists and just put, you know, the distinct cities and states in the United States. That's why we weren't seeing a full list. Okay. So next, got another form I wanna cover. Okay. So next, um, this is a form where we just have a combo box of products and nothing, and these are just display fields. These aren't actual fields. So the idea is when I select a product, I want the, pro I want the uh, description, the product type, and the class to show. So when I select product, we're going to populate these values. In. And here we're going to use set value, field value. But I also want to have some buttons on this form. Um, and I want these buttons to be dynamic because these buttons are not always relevant. It depends on the product that's chosen. So if I happen to choose a product that belongs in the product class of hardware, there are two buttons that I have, hardware prices and hardware catalog. If I choose one that's in chemical, then I want to show a button that is that to enable to view the chemical catalog. And if it's neither, I don't want to see any of those buttons. Okay. So the way we do that, buttons are buttons are a bit different. So buttons are we we classify them as features. So an application can have features. Like uh, if I had a save button on a form, I could give that name, I could give that save button a feature and the feature might be called, you know, uh, ability to save. And that's something I could turn on and off depending on, you know, maybe the user's security or in this case, you know, the, the actual record that's chosen. So let's, let's set this up. So I'm gonna go back to App Builder and I have this form three. Initially, I'm gonna take this off. Let's just look at this form. So here I'm going after a different file. It's just a product master. Let me just show it to you. So I'm just doing a select all from this file and all it is is a product name, a description, type, class. This, these are the four fields I'm, I'm, I'm using here. Okay. So let me go back into form three. So I added those four fields and then I made one of them editable. And that's the product number and I made it into a, a dropdown. And here I'm actually using the same data source. I'm reusing the same data source that this form is based off of just to get a list of product numbers. So if we see it, okay. Did I not save? Oh, I didn't save it. Let me take this off. I was wondering why that worked. So without the form template program, just choose, but no, nothing happens. So let me go and let me add it back. So now when I choose, it's populating those values. So let's see what's going on there. First, I'm gonna look at the network traffic. Here's my call. So we called our, our template program. Change, prodno was the field that was changed and here's the value of prodno. I wanna go over here. 
disregard this df for now we're going to get into that next that's the whole buttons but all we did is we set the value of three fields description class and type and you're probably wondering what is this craziness um we encode values to utf-16 this is so we can work with like if you had japanese characters coming back um, but this all gets handled by the front end it interprets this into you know, model 6500 x pc board yeah they're basically hex codes so um, because I'm going to work with buttons, I need to put this into an application. So, so let, let, let's do that next. Um, so I'm going to save this. And let me go to apps. Okay, so I have I created a, a, an application already working with form, form helpers. Let me go into this. <clears throat> so this was our original uh, form. Form two. Let me just add it in here. Uh, DD eleven form two. So this was our our combo box one. Uh, let's see. Let me change this to this a height of 200 let's say okay i'm gonna go into section three which is empty now too i just didn't want to have to make this a demonstration of setting this up because we do this in other developer diaries just wanted to try and save some time here so let me add form three in here okay uh let me Set a height here. Let's make this 300. I'll make it 350 because I'm going to add some buttons. Okay. So let me just let me just save this now. Let's make sure that this is all working. So here's our original. Let me go next. So I put these buttons up here to kind of toggle between the sessions. Here's our state combo that we just did. And I go next, and then here's our, our last form. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to attach some buttons on here, and I want to make this whole, uh, this the, the, the form template smart enough to know when to hide and show those. So let's go back to App Builder. And I'm going to go into behaviors. I'm just going to collapse all the stuff I don't care about. And I'm just going to deal with this form. I'm going to add a button. Hardware catalog. Okay. So when this is clicked, I need to do something. Um, you know, really, we're not doing anything here. I'm just going to do something. Um, I'm going to set an app variable. You clicked hardware catalog. So by the way, you'll, you'll see what this happens. When you set the app variable of nab info, that causes that little snack bar to pop up. And I'm going to add another button. Hardware prices. And when that is clicked, I'll do the same thing. You clicked hardware prices. Okay, and then another button. Chemical catalog. And by the way, I should set, I'm going to set, I'm going to set all these to initially hidden. I should have done that initially. Um, okay, and then when they click that, set app variable, I'll change this one a bit. Um, 
you clicked Amico Catalog. So this will pop up a window with a title and a message. All right, uh, let me go back in here. I wanna make sure this is initially hidden and back in here and make sure this is initially hidden. Okay, I think we're ready now. Save. And save. So I'm gonna reload this application. So remember, if it's hardware, we wanna see the two hardware buttons. If it's chemical, we wanna see the one chemical button. And if it's neither, we don't want to see any of the buttons. So let me go next, next. Okay, so no button so far. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I need to go back into App Builder and I need to make those buttons. I need to code them as features. So let me show you how to do that. So back into my application. And up top here, there's the security section. I'm gonna click that. So notice this looks just like behaviors, although we can't add actions or anything, but we could put in feature names. I'm just gonna clean this up and just look at the things I care about. The hardware catalog. Oh my God, I, I must not have saved something correctly here. I'm missing one of my buttons. Let me do this first. So hardware catalog, I wanna give it a feature name of hardware. So basically, what I'm, what I, I'll be able to enable or disable the feature named hardware in order to hide and show this. And this I'll give a feature name of chemical. Okay. Let me go back and uh, I must not have saved something correctly here. I'm gonna add the hardware prices because I wanna see two buttons for hardware. Hardware prices initially hidden. On click. I'm going to set an app variable. I just want to pop up a little message. You click where prices save. Save that. And I'm going to go back into features or to security. Let me collapse this and hardware prices and that's also going to be hardware. So you can have you can have multiple. Um, you could use the same feature name for multiple buttons, clicks, actions, whatever. Okay, so let me go back and let's save this. Okay, so now I'm gonna reload this application and I'm gonna go right away to this last section. Let me click this first guy, hardware, there we go. So that's product class PCB, so we see nothing. Uh, let's see, where's a chemical? Maybe I should have output a chemical on here or something, but uh, there we go. Now we only see the one button for chemical. So let's look at the code here and see what's going on. So this was number three. So form render, form render, oops. form render, we're doing nothing. We didn't need to do anything. The, the, the product combo was enabled. That's what we wanted. And then everything else was just a display field. So we didn't need to do anything. So else, if Prodno is changed, first thing we're doing is we're getting the value of Prodno, of product. Then we're just doing a simple uh, SQL statement. I'm just getting the entire record for that product. Now I'm setting the values for the form. So that's why we're seeing those, those values populate. I'm doing a set value for each one. And then last, I'm just enabling disabling features based on the product class. If it's hardware, I wanna enable the hardware feature. 
and disable chemical. If it's chemical, the opposite. I'm gonna enable chemical and I'm gonna disable hardware. If it's neither, disable them both. So if we look at, let's just see the network traffic here. So I'm gonna go back to this top one. Let's see what's past that. So we, we chose a, a product that's hardware. So we disabled DF, is short for disable feature, chemical, we enabled hardware. And then we set the values. So if I do one that is neither, we should see disable both chemical and hardware, and then we're setting the values again. And then if I do chemical, I think this was chemical. Now we're disabling hardware, enabling chemical, and setting the values. So I should special behaviors behind the buttons, John. Oh yes, good thinking. Okay, so chemical, you clicked chemical catalog. So remember that was the one where I did I, I, I did nab message and nab title. And then the other ones, hardware, you click hardware catalog, you click hardware prices. So that's it. Um, I think we, you know, went over mostly everything that you would use 99% of the time in a, in, a, in a form helper template to, you know, give your form some level of interactive interactivity. Um, if there are no questions. I might mention one thing that, you know, so the hardware catalog might imply it's going to send you to a website. And typically you're going to want that to you know, use it, use the, URL widget, but you'd want to make it pop up in a separate window, typically because of uh, security. Uh, what's it called? Pro reverse uh, cross-domain security, I believe, is what comes into play. Yeah. So yeah, typically that might just like this click might just launch a uh, you know a new browser tab. So all right. So no. Uh, no questions? Must have been very thorough. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think we'll end it a bit early then. Very good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.